Hey guys, how's it going? So between this afternoon and tomorrow morning, we're hoping to get a couple of evergreens in the ground and the whole area mulched. You know, every time I walk out here, the water looks clearer and clearer. You can start to see down there to the bottom and this part right here will start looking like how it kind of looks right up here. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at that. It's pretty hot this afternoon, so the fish are kind of hanging out in the fish cave there. I can see a couple in the shade of the lily pads and the big dra the dragonflies are unreal around this area now. They have found it. Do you see that big one? So here's what I'm kind of thinking. I think we need a, a green solid looking evergreen right about where that shovel handle is. I don't know if you can see that. It's to the right of that gold dogwood. Just in this gap area here. I don't want it to be something that gets super wide because we've got a lot of beautiful things in here. Maybe, you know, the Spartan junipers get about five to six feet wide. Might be a really nice texture in there. And then I'm thinking a third Serbian spruce bumped back down the base of the berm so that we've got one, two, and then a shorter one back in here, which will kind of fill in the gap and eventually be kind of a, a block for that light that's back there. I'm gonna walk around here to see what kind of space we have to deal with. You know, the evergreens, they all grow so dang slow. So, you know, putting a juniper in here, I think would be really nice. The service berry tops at 15, about 15 feet wide. So seven and a half feet on center. So, you know, the two will kind of touch in the end. Uh, but I think it's gonna be good right here. And we really want to go for a very thick, solid wall, kind of a very thick border. And then back down over here, where I'm thinking that other Serbian can go. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Let's see. We've got a blue spruce that I think will get 15 to 20 wide. And so will this Austrian pine, plus we have a heritage birch. We might just need to be patient and let these things fill in. I could put some kind of like a large shrub though in here, like a black lace elderberry, um, something that will take up some space, but not be something that will be, I don't know, it's a lot easier to take out, like something like this, black lace elderberry. That would be gorgeous back here. Okay, so I think we might just be doing the Spartan juniper. <laughs> oh. So I'm gonna go grab a Spartan juniper and we're just gonna set it there, see what we think about how it looks and then we will then we'll move on it oh yeah i really like that i think there's a perfect amount of space and it just bridges that gap, kind of covers a little bit more of that three rail fence right behind it. And it adds a different, a little bit of a different green because you know, the spruces are kind of like a bicolor green blue. And then the Norway down here has more of like a softer deep green. And then it's, yeah, the juniper is just a little bit of a different color and I like the different structure too. So we're gonna go with that. Oh, I love that one back there. That was what it needed. It needed a little bit of weight, a little bit of bone structure that's not gonna go away in the winter time because you know, all the joy pie weed, the service berry, the dogwood, all of those things will go away in the winter. You know, we'll have stems from the red twig, which will look beautiful back there. But I needed just a little bit of extra oomph in the evergreen department. So I think that's gonna be really perfect. And there are only two other things I wanna get done in this space before we start mulching. Starting with moving this crab apple back. So we placed this crab apple before we decided to put this big oak tree right here. Uh, clearly these two will not be compatible once they get big because this oak tree has a spread of 40 feet. This one has a spread of 15 to 20. This one needs to go right back in here and we really need a red element anyway here. So that'll be perfect. It'll be easy. I brought the umbrella out because it is hot. 
So we'll get that moved, and then I don't know if we're gonna get this done yet this afternoon, but I need to move one of these Serbian spruces. So we've got these trio of spruce trees out here on the berm. The two outer ones look like they're the same shape and the same size. This one is looking wild, and we can't get it to look very straight. It's got a bunch of branches. It looks like it was tied up for too long or something. I don't know, and it looks kind of mangy. I think what we're gonna do, I'm still gonna plant it, but I'm not gonna have it front and center right here. I've got another spruce that looks similar to the other two, so I think we'll pop this one out, put it somewhere else, and put the other one in this space. And things would probably even out over time, but I wanna start with things looking really nice, especially with how much effort went into this area. <sighs> yeah, and it shouldn't be too much trouble. We might wait to do that one in the cool of the morning. But let's get this one moved back about six feet ish. Okay, that's so much better. So this is where it was, this is where it now is, so it can kind of fill in this space right back in here, and this oak tree will have a chance to spread out, and those won't compete with one another. And I cannot wait to mulch tomorrow morning. We're gonna call it for the day just because it's getting a little bit late, so we'll tackle this spruce tree tomorrow morning, get a new one in there, and then we'll just get all of this powdery soil covered. Oh, it's gonna look so good. So we will see you guys in the morning. Oh boy. You gonna hit me with a Nerf dart? Ah! Oh, you hit the camera. You're not supposed to actually shoot at people, Benjamin. No shooting at people, dude. You're lucky you hit the camera, not me. Come on, baby. Hi, sweetie. You wanna see the pond? Just be careful, make sure to pick your feet up. Then you won't get mulch in your shoes. Looks better when the sun goes behind a cloud, huh, dude? Whew, not so harsh. Clouds need to be bigger. Good morning, it is a new day. We are gonna start by getting this spruce tree moved out. So that means we've gotta dig a hole out in the south garden so that it's prepped and ready to go. We'll lift this one out of its hole, move it right away over there. I'm kinda of glad um, that we're getting after it. I mean, it's just a couple of days after it was planted so it hasn't started to root or anything. It should be just fine to move it and then we'll get the new one that kinda of matches these other two put in here and then we can start mulching. And I'm so excited for this process because this soil is so white. It is so white and it is so puffy. Uh, so if we even get a slight breeze in this area, it's just like it poofs everywhere. Like, look at that, poofs. Let's see how things are going over here. Oh, I see the koi are up a little higher than they were yesterday. Oh, oh, things are looking good. Oh, there's one. Hi, Douglas. All right, so we're just going to get this started.
All right, guys, mulch is done and it looks amazing. Look at this. Oh, just getting all of that white powdery soil covered up is so nice. Now imagine the flagstones. So those will start right here at the driveway and they'll go down, you know, to form the patio area. We had already put down some mulch right when we finished the pond, just so you could see a distinction between where the berms were and where the pathway was. Decided not to put any more like fresh mulch down today because we're just going to be roughing it up to do the, the uh, flagstones but it just looks so phenomenal. It's about 8.30 in the evening right now, so you can see what it looks like at this time of day. Um, little strip of light right down the center right there. But I wanted to wait until a little bit later today when things, for the most part, were in the shade so we could walk through and kind of just take a look at all of the different varieties. First off, let me just walk in here so you can see the flower beds. Just take it in. Oh. I am just in love with this area. That spruce looks so nice. Look at that. That dark mulch, it's a compost actually, but it um, contrasts the stones. It makes the plants pop. It just looks so good. But I think we'll start with a plant tour right in the uh, front part, entrance. And we'll start here and work our way back. Okay, so starting with the two trees that kind of flank the opening here. Now this is a red oak. It is so tall. Oh my goodness. And this is one of the ones along with there's a second one right there that uh, were delivered here on a really hot day on a really fast interstate, 80 mile an hour interstate, and they got really scorched on one side, this side right here. So I think they'll be okay. I think they'll push new leaves, but anyway. That's what that is. It grows 50 feet tall, 40 foot spread. So we're going to have a nice big tree, a couple of them, to provide some shade to this area. We've got Royal Frost Birch, which I didn't realize, and I think I mentioned it in one of the videos. I was telling Brian about uh, what plants I had to put around here, and I mentioned birch, and he said, oh, those are great, but we'll have to make sure to site them maybe like 15, 20 feet away from the, the pond liner, like the edge of the pond because uh, their roots sense water and they'll jump the liner and try to get right into the pond and they can just kind of create chaos around the liner. So we decided to clump all three of them together. So that's three individual trees clumped together in the same hole, kind of. Not kind of, that's what we did. We dug just a great big hole and put a little bit of space between each root ball, but I love the look of group trees like that and birch trees take to it especially well. So that's what those are and those uh, trunks will brighten up they'll get whiter with age and they've got kind of a bronze purpley green leaf so a little bit different than the oak over here but this one will have kind of a yellow orange fall color while this one will be bright red so that will be very pretty and then of course we've got the serbian spruce which you know if they really like their spot they can get pretty enormous like oh 40 to 60 feet tall they probably won't ever get that big here that's why I put them close together. And I thought, you know what? They won't get that big for, will they get that big in my life? I don't know. So we went with the close spacing on these. Either way, uh, I think 15 feet-ish wide, 15 to 20. Again, I don't think they're gonna get that big in our area. Um, we use them a little bit more as like a medium size ac kind of accent evergreen, but they're just beautiful. I love their bicolor needles looking a little stressed, you know, from their ride over here, but they just have a very soft look to them. And they are fairly soft-ish, as soft as a spruce can be. Okay, so right here, we've got the Arctic Fire Dogwood. So these grow in our area, like six feet plus. Um, they'll get bright red stems. And I really wanna focus in for this whole area on things that look like you could find them in a forest. You know, I had brought over a ton of plants to use in this area. I had some beautiful roses and other things that I love, but they just look too formal for this area. I wanna use things that, yeah, look like you could find them in a meadow or in a forest somewhere. And then this right here, so we'll just start and kind of go around the perimeter of the pond. This is a Bush's Engelman spruce. Oh, there's a tag. Oh, thank the good Lord. I wasn't gonna, oh yeah, Bush's lace, Engelman spruce. Now, this is the only plant I put here knowing I was gonna probably have to move it because it just gets too big, but I really wanted for end shots and stuff for everybody who was putting this pond together. I wanted to have some real pretty plants in place. This one grows 25 feet tall by only six feet wide. So honestly, it's gonna get like three feet on center. So it just kind of barely go over the rocks. But I think that the height, that's way too tall. I think it would look kind of odd. So I'm just gonna pop that up 
and move it back somewhere once I find something that I really that I like for this area. I love that structure though. But I just thought it looked so pretty there for uh, the time being. Then we've got some green echinacea right here. I think those are really sweet. Cannot remember the variety name of that one. I had all the tags in a pile and I think that they got tossed. So I remember most of these, but some of them I will not remember. I apologize. We've got an Uncle Fogey spruce down here, which originates here then has this long funky stem. They just grow along the ground and it will spread out. Like it'll spread and kind of go over to the rocks over there. It'll probably put out some runners this way, but it's just a really neat, just unusual looking pine. And then we popped a Beyond Midnight Caryopteris right here. It grows about two to two and a half feet tall and wide. It's kind of perfect to hide the uh, business going on around here. This is where we're gonna bring electric. We still have to trench. so. We do have access right over here, so we'll just have to do a shallow-ish trench over here and stub up electric. Right now, we actually have an extension cord that runs, it's under mulch, but it runs <laughs> over to the barn. And then we've got this gorgeous grass right here that grows eight feet tall and five feet wide. I wanted something with some impact right there. Again, I will try to find the names of these, but this is a really tough perennial, so even in the wintertime, this is gonna be really beautiful interest. Then we've got the low grow sumac. So this one right here grows two feet tall, nine feet wide. So it's gonna just fill in this area right here. And it produces the most beautiful, vibrant red fall color. They're super tough. I like the structure of the leaves. They kind of come out in threes like that. And that kind of has like a foresty vibe to me. And then we've got a Baccarat blue spruce right here, which doesn't get quite as big as like a Colorado. Uh-oh, I've got a broken branch right here. Ooh, I'm gonna need to get pruners for that. Uh, on this one, about 12 to 15 foot spread, 20 to 25-ish feet wide. Uh, so I think it's just gonna be the perfect evergreen for this area. And you know, we are so thankful for all the trees we installed last year, the big ones. I mean, all of those, like this one, blue spruce, the Norway, this is a blue spruce, another Norway, and another blue spruce. Those were all part of the Malad tree farm trees we had installed last year and it makes for the most beautiful backdrop. Same goes for that tall blue spruce right there and that one right over there. Okay, moving on, we've got, this is a baby Joe pie weed, so it's one that doesn't get super tall like the traditional one. They grow about three feet tall, so they're pretty close to full height and they'll spread out about three feet. So we've got them starting back here just in this nice drift. They attract pollinators, butterflies, um, they don't have a super bright bloom. In fact, the only bright bloom we have in here are just a few little echinacea. I just want a little pop of color up there. Uh, but this just has a very soft look to it, almost like a milkweed look to it, to me. We've got lemon jade sedum right here, just a very beautiful sedum um, that's got a lemony yellow bloom. It's all in bud stage right now, so they haven't started to open yet. We've got a weeping Norway spruce right here. This is just a traditional weeping one. Um, like the leader looks like it's right down here. See that? And this will take off in all kinds of different directions. So it'll spread over and maybe kind of hug this rock. It'll go this direction, it'll go back. I think this is gonna be a really neat, unique looking piece right here. We've got some white variegated Carex back in here, which has popped in several areas. There's three here. I think there's a few, like one by that rock over there and a couple by that rock. Okay, we're gonna make our way back around this side. I did come in with a Spartan juniper right here. I was gonna put a third Serbian, but the uh, Spartans only grow five to six feet wide. And I thought, you know what, this is a, I think it's a hedgerose gold red twig dogwood, which will go grow eight to 10 feet tall and wide. It has beautiful yellow variegation. It will develop red stems, but that will be like the bulk right in here. So I just wanted something that will grow up tall and we can trim it or not, but it keeps a very conical tight growth habit. And I wanted that structure back here instead of something more open like those because we've got a lot of that. So again, two of the Serbians right back here. We do have um, heritage birch. There's a Colorado blue here. There's an Austrian pine here. And I did see a few comments about how, you know, we didn't completely cover the basketball light and the hoop, which they eventually will be covered up. All of these plants get huge, like these evergreens and the birch back in here. You will not see them eventually. Uh, but I, you know, there's a spot, a space like right in here that I thought about coming in with another Serbian, but I just, it's going to be too much. So in this area, I felt like, oh, 
I didn't really want to overcrowd it. We'll just let it do its thing and fill in over time. This right here was the star though. This is the one that everybody loved the most, this grass. This is a blue gram of grass called Blonde Ambition. They grow three by three. They have such a beautiful meadow appearance. And honestly, if you're standing over there in the morning, the sun's coming through this tree here. It casts some light here that these seed heads pick up and it's almost like the whole waterfall has this halo above it. So pretty. And the thing I appreciate about this grass in particular, hey boys, is that even when it stools out and thickens up, it still has that very open kind of uh, wispy texture to it. So you can still see things around it. And I think it does a good job at grounding this rock right here. You can still see that great big boulder, but um, there's gonna be some sort of weight down below. I do have a little dipper Cotoneaster right here, which I think this one will grow two to four feet wide, stays very short, like a six inches to 12 inches tall. And so I just kind of wanted something to barely hug the top of these rocks, but it gets little white flowers in the spring followed by red berries. So I think that'll be a sweet little accent and I want to do a whole lot more of that around the rocks. Just little things hugging and kind of um, softening some of the edges. This is a Jacqueline Hillier elm, which I can't remember. I want to say it gets six feet tall and, or maybe it's four feet tall and six feet wide or vice versa, but they get such a cool structure when they're grown. Like they're the type that you can trim out the centers and they have this very unique, almost like a Japanese maple structure, but this one can handle full sun. I would love to have a Japanese maple up here with that beautiful kind of weeping texture, but this is so full sun still, those would fry if we tried. So I had to put something in here that might get that sort of structure or something very unique um, while being able to handle the sun. And I don't know if the stems look, have that kind of look yet. Mm, kind of. My parents have one of these in their garden and it's such a cool tree, like a small tree. Okay, let's keep going before we lose all light. We've got another of the hedgerows gold red twig dogwood and there's another one right down there. I did three of them just to kind of tie it all in. We've got, oh, I forgot that tree right there and this one right here. Those are Princess Diana service berries. So they have a huge flurry of big white blooms in the spring followed by berries midsummer that the birds love. The birds will all, already be over here because of all the water. Um, and then they get the most brilliant fall color. It's a like vivid orange red. And I do have a third one of these that I might tuck in somewhere over there just to draw the interest or maybe we tuck it in over there. And you know, like all other spaces, this area will evolve, but I'm just so happy with the way it looks right now. I mean, if, even if we didn't put a single plant in here more this, the rest of this year, which is likely not the case, but um, if we did not put another thing in this space, I would be just as happy, it's so pretty. We've got the Penicetum of some variety <laughs> that stays smaller, like two and a half to three feet tall and wide. This one looks like it's a little bit on the dry side or did get dry. It's wet right now though, so we're probably good. So there's two of them here, one right down there. We've got the pink echinacea in this space. We've got a um, procumbens blue spruce, which grows two feet tall, 10 feet wide. So it's gonna, you know, totally go over the edge of the rock face right there. It'll grow back. It'll just be this really beautiful accent, but they're pretty slow growing. So it'll take a while. Another one of the low grow sumacs. We've got some low growing hardy geraniums that have a sweet little pink flower on them. Hardy geraniums are just an amazing plant because they're tough, they can take full sun, they can take our high pH, they bloom for most of the summer, and then they turn bright red in the fall. So you get a ton of interest. There's a couple more, actually three more right down here. There's that other dogwood. There's the other Carex close up and another low grow sumac. This is a weeping blue spruce, which you know, these can take on all kinds of different shapes depending on how you wanna stake them. If we continue to stake the leader up, it will grow up taller and have branches that go down. Or at some point we can take the stake out or stop staking it and this top leader will start to bend over and it will get a little bit of a unique, interesting structure. I love how it's structured now. I love that whoop shape. And then we have a Royal Raindrops crab apple right here, which is so beautiful, multi-trunk. This is the only one other than that blue spruce that I need to move still, that I did move. Uh, we had put it right here and then we ended up putting the oak tree right here, way too close together. So decided to pop that back, have it fill in this space right here because that one will get 15 feet-ish tall and wide. So we've got, you know, the red, 
the blue, the gold, and the green. Those are the four colors we try to put in all spots. And then last couple of plants over here. Oh, there's that other Carex. We've got a Joe's Bess um, bristlecone pine, which looks so, so pretty. These grow very slow. Uh, they top out at about six feet tall by four feet wide. And it's just a beauty. I think it's perfect for this space. I think it's perfect for this spot too. So we have a little bit of evergreen interest in front. Um, you know, while keeping the whole pond, like the view of it open, it would be beautiful. I think having a little bit of mystery and having this, you know, grow up a little bit more and like seeing views from around it would be really nice. And then we've got a miscanthus, which I think is this morning light. It might be, it grows four to five, maybe six feet tall and three to four feet wide or so. I wanted it backing this rock just to kind of give it a little vertical interest, but also when this gets big, it's gonna come out you know, to here and kind of go over the rock a bit. And it's got so much variegation that when the light hits it especially, it's gonna really light this area up. And then two other plants that I had that made it actually into the pond are some iris. This is a purple iris right here. And there's another one right by that stump there right there oh the spider lily oh they're so pretty also the foxfire lily in here can you see that it's about ready that bloom's gonna open tomorrow it'll be open oh i'm gonna have to get in there and take a close-up picture and the fish are doing great can you see them down there samantha and i were just out here a little while ago feeding them and they were coming up to the top and eating and they're not eating out of our hand yet. It'll probably be a while before they do that. I can see all six koi right there, but I don't see the high fin banded shark. It's in here somewhere. If that one blends in with the rocks, it'd be hard to see. It might be in the fish cave down here. And then again, on this side, I've probably explained this to you too many times. You guys know, we're gonna put in a couple of stairs, kind of cut into this um, area and put a pathway that goes around there's the berm right here so it'll kind of go around the base of this berm and it'll be just like this nice little winding walkway that will lead you straight out lining up with that walkway over there so we still have all of this to plant up all of this area also swinging around all this area right in here not to mention filling out the rest of this berm on the outside I'm just thinking, you know, maybe I've got some proud berry coral berries we might put in here, um, some things like that. And ornamental grasses, some plumbago, I think would be beautiful. I think I'd like to try to get my hands on a lot of the plumbago. If you're not familiar with that one, I don't know what zone it is, but it's a ground cover that's got this sweet little green glossy leaf and produces the most vibrant blue flowers. And then in the fall, it has vivid red foliage. Really beautiful and it stays low, so it'd be really pretty around the edges of the berms around the rocks I think that would be nice but i am just so in love with this area it is so much fun i can't even believe i'm looking at it right now it's just nuts nuts and there are lights in the pond which is kind of fun that you can see them right now there's one here there's one under the waterfall there's one under the big rock one right over here and is there just four i can't remember i think that might be Oh, I think there's one under this lily maybe. Yep, one directly under that lily. So it's really beautiful at night. The one under the waterfall kind of shines up and uplights this tree. And then this one, which I'm not sure it's gonna do as good of a job with the lily pad over it, but it was um, shooting light up and lighting up this tree. It was so perfect. It's so beautiful no matter when you look at it. And I feel like that kind of buttons up the pond project for now. I mean, in terms of what we wanted to accomplish after the crew left, we really wanted to make sure all the plants had drip and that we mulched the area so it looked really nice. And then we're just kind of waiting on flagstones to arrive. They've been ordered, but they haven't showed up yet. So we'll tackle that project when they get here. And then we'll just be doing little planting projects around this area uh, for the rest of time because gardens, they're never done. But we do have these trees right here. So this in an effort to be over prepared for this project. I, I did over prepare. So we've got this beautiful pile of trees, which we'll have no problem placing out in the garden. So we'll be prioritizing that over the next few days because those are B&Bs and we'll need to get them in the ground. There's a couple of Serbian spruces, a couple of horn beams, a weeping cedar of Lebanon, uh, one or more of those service berries, and then some Spartan junipers. And that's it, you guys. Huge shout out to Paul and Bethany 
first of all, Aaron and Bethany uh, put all the drip out here shortly after everything was planted, but Bethany has been owning the drip, like really monitoring it, making sure that everything's getting water, like the, the drip emitters are placed properly. Um, she's swapped a bunch of them out for smaller emitters. We always start with twos, two gallon per hours, especially on newly planted things when it's really hot. But sometimes you just find that you don't need that. So she's been swapping things out to half gallon and one gallon per hour emitters, especially on the slopes because we don't want to have any water waste. So that's awesome. And then she and Paul did the bulk of the mulching. I helped with about, I don't know, the first third today. Then I had to leave for a meeting. By the time I got back, which I fully intended on coming back in and helping them, they had it pretty much done. So that was so, so nice. But I will leave you with this view because it's gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.